Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you are right now. Thanks so much for joining us. I just want to give participants just an additional um, little bit of time to, um, to join us um, as they're still logging in. Thanks so much. Okay, so I want to respect everybody's time. Uh, my name is, th first of all, thank you all so much for joining us for the Harvard Divinity School Applying to HDS at Mid-Career event. My name is Margaret Okada Sheck, and I'm an Associate Director of Admissions here at Harvard Divinity School. So, <clears throat> Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about Harvard Divinity School, and then uh, we'll get uh, just for about the first 10 minutes, and then we'll get started uh, with uh, our panelists and moderator. So, um, um, Harvard Divinity School is located in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and is one of Harvard's 12 graduate and professional schools. HDS was founded in 1816 and is the most religiously pluralistic divinity school in the world representing over 30 faith traditions, including students who aren't affiliated with any faith tradition. HDS brings together scholars of religion and conversation with religious practitioners as learning partners and community members. Our degree programs lead to infinite pathways with alums in every field and industry who value ethical leadership, religious literacy, and service-oriented mission-driven work. To give you a snapshot of the HDS community, um, here's a, some data from this year's incoming class of students. We have 90 MTS students, 44 MDiv students, and one THM student. Um, as you'll see, oh, what is missing is the Master Religion in Public Life, MRPL, because um, we just launched the program, so we don't have um, any matriculated students for that yet. Within the incoming class, 52% identify as female, 32% as male, and 16% as non-binary. The average age is 25, but, uh, and please keep in mind the age range of students enrolled went for, uh, was ranged from 20 to 56. So definitely keep in mind that it's honestly an average and we bring in um, students from a really diverse array of professional and academic um, and life experiences that bring them to HDS. Um, uh, the HDS students reported over 30 different religious affiliations and students of color comprised 36% of the incoming class and international students made up another 14%. In addition, we have 99 colleges and universities represented in the incoming class, which means that we have students coming in from a really diverse array of institutions and academic training. We offer four degree programs. The Master of Divinity or MDiv prepares graduates for chaplaincy and ministry broadly conceived or a range of other careers that center around service and ethical leadership. The Master of Theological Studies program or MTS enables students to explore deeply and broadly the languages, literatures, thoughts, uh, thought institutions, practices, normative claims and structures of a variety of theological fields and religious traditions. The Master of Theology program or THM is for applicants who already hold an MDiv and is designed to allow students to explore a topic in great depth or delve into a new topic that impacts their ministry, whatever that may look like. And finally, the Master of Religion in Public Life or MRPL is a recently launched degree program for applicants who are experienced professionals who wish to develop in-depth knowledge of the ways religion influences public life in their field. Um, please note that there is no funding available for either the Master of Theology program or the Master of Religion and Public Life program. Um, and, uh, so that's just something for all of you to keep in mind. HDS has five affiliated programs and centers, which you can see listed on this slide, it includes the new brand new program uh, for the evolution of spirituality. 
This program is spearheaded by Dr. Dan McCannon and supports the scholarly study of emerging spiritual movements, uh, marginalized spiritualities, and the innovative edges of established with religious traditions. Note that there is also hundreds of other programs and centers elsewhere at Harvard that HDS students have access to for programming, funding, and other resources. In the bottom right, you'll see a photo of the wonderful faculty here at HDS, helmed by Dean David Hempton in the blue in the front. Faculty are fairly accessible to HDS students and are on the whole quite happy to provide guidance and mentorship. There were over 230 HDS courses offered last year and HDS students also have access to courses throughout the entire Harvard University as well as throughout the Boston Theological Interreligious Consortium or BTI, which is a consortium of 10 theological institutions of higher education in the Boston area. The BTI offers easy cross registration as well as a range of other resources across institutions. For MDiv and MTS students, 50% of your coursework can be completed outside of HDS, so students can truly customize their HDS experience to create their unique path through the program and get the preparation each student needs for their goals. And if none of the thousands of courses available to you fit the bill, you can also work directly with an HDS faculty member to do an independent study. It's safe to say that no two HDS students have the same transcript. The Office of Student Life supports over 35 student organizations every year, and it's easy to start your own if there's something that doesn't exist um, that you think should. Some examples of student organizations are Queer Rights, the HDS Prison Education Project, the HDS Garden Group, the third and third chapter, a group for students over 50. These student organizations host over 60 student-led events each year, in addition to the over 500 recurring events, which include weekly worship services hosted by faith-based organizations, uh, faith-based student organizations. The photo here is from the third annual Black Religion, Spirituality, and Culture Conference hosted by Harambe, a group for students of African descent uh, last year, which brought together scholars and students from a wide range of institutions as well as outside of academia. There are also two weekly events at HDS, noon service on Wednesdays and community tea on Tuesdays, and students have access to events and organizations across Harvard. Um, HDS offers generous financial aid. 90% of students receive funding, and this is available for um, only the MTS and MDiv programs. We put the vast majority of our financial aid funding into need-based aid in order to get the most money to the most people who need it. And therefore, we strongly encourage everyone to submit a financial aid application so you can be considered for need-based aid. 10% of students receive merit awards and those are based solely on the strength of the application. Um, there's nothing additional you need to do for that. Our baseline need-based uh, package is a 75% tuition grant. So as you're planning for graduate school and thinking about your budget, that's a good number to use. For folks with more need, we offer higher packages that cover 100% of tuition and some come with a living stipend. Merit awards cover 100% of tuition and include a living stipend as well. Um, as a reminder, um, the uh, Master of Religion and Public Life, which is a new program, is a small program and there is no funding for that program. However, students in both the MTS and MDiv programs are absolutely able to access the resources of the religion and public life. Um, and I believe they're also launching a certificate, um, uh, like a certificate um, that MTS and MDiv students can um, obtain in conjunction with their degrees um, if you are interested in gaining that extra sort of set of uh, a credential that way. So um, I just want to go quickly through the application timeline. Um, if you are interested in entrance in fall 2021, the application is now available. The deadline, uh, we only have one enrollment period um, and that the deadline is January 7, 2021. Um, the financial aid app, uh, application will become available in mid-January of 2021 to all applicants um, where they'll receive their information. Um, 
and that the financial aid deadline is um, mid March, uh, mid March of twenty uh, of February sixteenth. I apologize, February sixteenth, twenty twenty one. Um, we release all decisions in mid-March and students get both who are admitted would get both their admissions decision and their financial aid decision within 24 hours of each other. So you have the full picture to be able to make a decision. And then all admitted students have to respond to our offer of admission by April 15th. So this should just give you a, a sort of snapshot if you are sort of not sure if you're applying for this year, but are interested perhaps for entrance in uh, 2022, the sort of schedule, ca the, the calendar sort of or timeline uh, generally is the same. Um, we publish the application generally in September. The deadline is in early January um, and we release decisions sometime in March. Typically that is, um, that carries over from year to year. Um, so there are multiple ways to stay connected with us. Um, we are offering a few more really fantastic events um, um, up until early December. Um, you can also connect with a current student by emailing uh, our Ask Students. Um, we also have a phenomenal HDS admissions blog, um, as well as a great um, Instagram account, and if you are uh, inclined. Um, and then please feel free to contact the admissions office at the email provided. So uh, let us get to the main event. Um, I'm going to hand things off to my colleague, Susan Lawler, who is the Director of, Student Ser uh, uh, Director of Career Services. Thanks so much, Susan. Thank you, Margaret, and thank you. That was a wonderful introduction to all we're doing at HDS. I know Margaret's going to stay available to take questions either through the chat feature or later if there are admission specific questions then she'll be here to answer those as well. Today's session is really focused on the topic of applying to HDS at mid-career. We know we have individuals every year who are very interested in coming back to school after time away doing some pretty interesting and uh, thoughtful things in terms of their work. And we have found, as we do in our classroom, that stories often help to inform and prompt questions and lead us toward understanding a bit more about uh, um, what it might be like in terms of the HDS experience. So we're happy that we have several HDS students joining us today who have offered to share their stories. I'm going to read the their short bio introductions for you and then turn it to them to talk about their own process of deciding to attend HDS, of how their experience to date has met um, expectations, and any thoughts that they might have to inform your own thinking at this period. Um, we want to leave plenty of time for Q&A, so we will get to that as quickly as we can. Let me begin with my introductions, which our individuals have prepared for us. First, I'd like to introduce Sally Hamill. Uh, Sally is a third year MDiv candidate at HDS, focusing on pastoral care, possibly leading to hospital or hospice chaplaincy. Sally hails from New York City, where she enjoyed a 30 year career in advertising, working for Group M, a division of WPP group companies, most recently as managing partner, digital media finance director. Sally has an MBA from NYU Stern School of Business and a BS in finance from the University of Connecticut. Normally, Sally lives in her beloved New York City, but due to the pandemic, she has relocated to Warren, Vermont for the academic year, where she's currently living with her adult daughter, Melinda, and her two cats, Artemis and Apollo. Sally's interests are walking, bike riding, skiing, and connecting with other people sharing their life stories. Sally also has a great love of music, having studied piano as a child. Uh, we'll hear from Sally in just a minute. I'd also like to introduce Tom Marietta. Tom is a third year MDiv candidate at HDS. Tom was attracted to HDS because of its commitment to rigor in religious scholarship and its value for pluralism. Tom is hoping to use his theological training to provide spiritual care and counseling to leaders in both religious and public sectors. 
Prior to coming to HDS, Tom served as president and CEO of Bright New Leaders, served as an urban superintendent, and was later named the Michigan Superintendent of the Year. He's also served as the Senior Advisor and National Director of Education Policy and Practice for Children's Defense Fund in Washington, DC. Tom has a doctorate from University of Pennsylvania in Education Leadership and Policy. He's worked at a number of K through 12, on a number of K through 12 policy issues in the international community, and has served on projects in, in Marrakesh in Portugal, Switzerland, France, Australia, New Zealand, and Germany. Uh, we'll hear from Tom in just a minute. Our third M Div student, Lori Sedgwick, is a second year M Div candidate at HDS. Um, after retiring from administration at Cornell University, Lori is realizing a dream come true by attending HDS. Her aspiration is to minister to people in need and very likely she'll be working with veterans in some way. Prior to Lori's work in higher ed, she held a range of positions in executive search, human resources, and served for six years as a communications officer in the US Army. Lori is mother to a 22 year old son who is living in Burlington, Vermont, and an opinionated senior citizen feline named Marbles. Lori is also a health and fitness devotee and in her spare time will either be at yoga class, cycling, running, or hiking. I'm so pleased that our three MDiv students are with us today. I'm not sure our MTS student has joined or not. Um, could someone let me know that and I can read Sam's, Sam's um, um, bio, she has not joined us. So what I'd like to do is hold off. And if she is able to make it, we know everyone has pulled away from classes to, to be with us. So why don't we concentrate on the folks who are here now and we can begin our Q&A. And if Sam, who is an MTS student, does indeed join us, we will bring her in later. Sally, may we start with you? I know we asked you to talk about a few things that brought you to HDS and what your experience has been like. Sure, absolutely. Welcome, everybody. And I'm so happy to be participating on this esteemed panel and excited to uh, welcome you to the process of applying to HDS. Um, so, so let's see. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know how exactly to start this. I, I came to I came to HDS after my 30 years of advertising because I ended up having a, um, you know, through a, through a variety of life events, including some illness um, in terms of having some cancer. And then also after following that treatment, I ended up walking across um, Spain on the Camino de Santiago. And both of those experiences really gave me an opportunity to look at what I was doing in my life. And I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit a little bit more uh, giving back to the community, a little bit more meaningful, a little closer to my desire to get into doing uh, into some type of hospital chaplaincy or pastoral care. I knew nothing about this. I had no religious background. It really was completely a surprise to me when I remember when I actually asked my uh, corporate reference to give me a, a recommendation for HDS. After I asked him, I went into the kitchen and threw up because I was so nervous about what they were going to think. Anyway, he was wonderful and gave me a wonderful reference, very supportive. So my point in saying this is that my coming to HDS was really about a personal yearning to explore more about what was going on uh, in, uh, with, with God in my life. But I didn't really see myself becoming like a, a, a minister necessarily, but I had this yearning to understand more about God. So I have had the, the most amazing experience. And I want to just say that as a, I keep pinching myself that I got to come here, I get to explore these amazing courses with these amazing professors and fellow students. Uh, you know, and you have such a wide variety of, 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 of courses and, and paths to take with an, an enormous amount of support. So I think that I just <clears throat> want to say that it's been, it's been amazing. I am actually, since I'm a third year, 
I'm looking for, I'm looking towards graduating in May and I'm a little bit panicked about what am I going to do. I am leaning towards hospital chaplaincy because I've had an opportunity through HDS to do field education, working as a chaplain intern at New York City hospitals because that's my hometown. So that's my plan right now. With COVID, everything's changing, but you know we'll, we'll see how it goes. So I think I might just stop there. Um, Susan, you could tell me if I missed something or we'll let other people speak. So I'm thrilled to have you here. That's great, Sally. Thank you. No, let's um, let's let's go on. Tom, I'm going to ask you if you would go next, and uh, we'll follow that with Lori, and we'll we'll get to our Q and A and see where folks are. Sure. I would like to start by welcoming everyone here, and also saying to both Sally and to Lori, I miss you so much. <laughs> uh, it's such a phenomenal. Um, family I think that we have at HDS and this has just been an amazing experience for me. Um, what brought me to um, the study of religion and, and, and theology and coming to the Div School is that very early on in my uh, spiritual life, um, I'm a part of the Pentecostal church and at that time, at the time that I uh, went into ministry, uh, my pastor uh, said to me, well, you know, if God has called you, you know, to ministry and, you know, if you're seeking the Holy Spirit's path, all you have to do is just continue to study and to be fervent in your study. And you don't need uh, to go to uh, divinity school, nor do you need to go to seminary. As long as you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're just fine. Um, but I really wanted to, in the same way that I prepared uh, to be a teacher and a superintendent or in policy, um, I felt like it would be spiritual malpractice if I were uh, leading people on a spiritual journey and I did not utilize the same tools so that I would be able to be empowered uh, to lead them on the spiritual path that God, um, you know, had prepared for them. And I wanted to be able to uh, understand and weave in uh, all of the different um, faith traditions and really understanding and giving myself a robust understanding about uh, religion and spirituality. I was accepted to a number of uh, schools, but I chose HDS specifically because I really wanted to commit myself to not only understanding the faith tradition of my youth, but I also wanted to understand other faith traditions as well. And I have found such beauty in understanding uh, those traditions. And it hasn't uh, depleted me in terms of my understanding of my own faith tradition has just made it more robust and has just expanded my world view um, in a way that I can't put into human vocabulary. And so I, with the number of scholars that I've had access to here at HDS, anytime that you go to a school like Harvard, you know that you're going to have access to unparalleled scholarship. But it's also been um, my peers, my colleagues that have uh, stretched me, that have allowed me to go deeper, that have, um, you know, allowed me to be able to share my own vulnerabilities, that have ministered to me, um, you know, at different times. And one of the things I think that is unique and very special about this community is that even beyond the classroom, you know, there are people like, you know, Jamie Johnson Riley, who, um, you know, helps with my classes, or Dean Hempton, very oftentimes I'll see in the hallway and will give me an encouraging word, or it's Beth and Julie in financial aid that are cheering me on and helping me, or Susan, or Sarah, um, that are constantly imparting uh, life 
into me. And so I'm so grateful that I've had an opportunity to be a part of this community because it feels like I have been enveloped by love. And so I'm so grateful um, for the opportunity that I've had here because it's really been transformative for me. And I'm saddened uh, <laughs> that it is coming to an end. And it's so funny when I first started three years ago, I said, three years, oh my God, it's the longest masters on the planet. Uh, <laughs> but now that it is coming to an end, I find myself in such a remorse because it has uh, just transformed me in ways that I never thought were possible. Oh, Tom, thank you so much for that. I, I think we're gonna hear more when we get to Q&A. Uh, Lori, you are a second year MDiv student. Um, you don't have to graduate this year. Maybe you, you could uh, speak a little bit about your experience to date in getting here. Certainly, absolutely. Thank you, Susan, and thank you, Margaret and Sarah for, for hosting this panel. And, and um, I will jump on the community bandwagon with Tom and say it's so great to see everybody. And, um, and just to kind of start out that way is, um, you know, given these um, really disorienting times that we're living in, I cannot think of a better place to be in that I feel so um, just nurtured and supported by the HDS community. And um, I mean that truly from my heart. Um, I, was, I was telling somebody recently that, you know, in every, any given week, you can attend up to a dozen different religious services um, in just about any faith tradition that you can imagine. And um, there's just such wonderful support and, um, um, I'm very grateful to be in the community. So um, as, as Susan mentioned in my, in my bio, I have most recently retired from administration at Cornell University. Um, I spent um, 20 years of my time there in career services and um, the bulk of that time actually working with MBAs and advising them. And I would say the last five years of my time excuse me, working with um, executive MBAs there, I started to feel like um, I was ready for something new. And so I took advice that I might give um, somebody that I was advising in career services. And I started doing some, in, in, some um, in, introspection and some exploration and um, talking to people. And, um, and I stumbled on Harvard Divinity School and, um, when I thought about what was one common thread that has been with me throughout my life, it's definitely pursuit of spirituality. And um, I definitely ran the gamut of um, uh, exploring different faith traditions. And um, that's just something that meant very much to me. And so my, my first reaction, honestly, when I stumbled on HDS was, um, oh, that'll never happen, I'll never get in. Um, that'll never happen for me. And so I gave myself that pep talk that I would have given somebody that I was speaking with. And um, I said, okay, I'm just gonna put it out there. And, um, and if things turn out positive, I'll just continue to pursue that path. And um, very blessed and fortunate that um, I was accepted. That was a joyous, joyous day and, and uh, a wonderful story to recount. And, um, and from that point, point forward, I really felt like my desires were aligned with the universe. And so I just kept getting encouragement to move along that path. And um, like Sally, definitely when I arrived here last year, continued to pinch myself, couldn't believe I was, I was really here. Um, no lie, um, being 50 at the time, seven years old, and getting back into the classroom was really hard and um, learning how to read uh, all over again um, in a critical way, writing papers, um, sitting in a classroom um, with, with a faculty member. Um, but I can tell you now, um, we're at the end of our um, first semester in my second year and I have gained so much confidence and um, 
I was sharing with Susan the other day as I turned in a paper the other day that I felt so great about. And I feel like, you know, my skills have improved over time. So, um, so you can do it. They can teach old dogs new tricks. So, <laughs> um, and, and it has just been an incredible, incredible experience and i um, um, happy to answer any questions that, that anyone might have about the experience of being in a classroom or, or the experience transitioning. Thank you, Lori. I, I think you've all answered that question about how HDS has met your expectations coming in. It sounds to me like they've exceeded them um, across the board. I, I think we'd like to turn to questions. I'm not sure if our um, final panelist, Sam, has, has joined us or not. Do we have any information on that from Sarah? No. Okay. This is this can happen and it may may well be technology or classes, but I think we can can proceed from here. And we'd love to open it to questions, which we can take through the chat and um, share with any panelists who you who you'd like to direct it to or open things to the group as a whole. Um, I think we have something who's come in, which has come in, which I will try to read. Um, if our panelists could share what you submitted for the writing sample or how you handled the application requirement as a, that requirement as a mid-career applicant. There's also a shout out to Sally, but I'll hold off on that one and kind of go to the, uh, the, the question itself, which really, has to do with the writing sample at mid-career. Anybody like to take that one? Margaret would. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I just wanted to chime in here because um, this is uh, the writing sample is actually a relatively new requirement that our panelists probably didn't even have the option because previously we absolutely required the GRE standardized examination for all applicants. However, as of last year, we made that requirement optional and instead included the academic writing sample instead. So, um, or in addition to, in conjunction uh, to all the other requirements. So I'd be happy to answer that question just sort of more broadly. Um, so, um, you know, this is a real chance for the admissions committee to see um, your, your ability to write and uh, make an argument um, and, and to do a little bit of research. So if it has been some time since you've been in the classroom, you can certainly adapt perhaps um, a piece of, um, potentially applicable uh, professional writing. Um, alternatively, you can also choose this as an opportunity to give yourself a homework assignment and write in something new. It's only, um, it's, it's, I believe, a maximum of 1,500 words, so it won't be that long. And really, this is an opportunity for you to get your feet a little bit wet and just try to, to, uh, to explore a little bit further what you're really, really excited about. Thanks. Thanks, Margaret. Um, any comments by any of our current students in terms of writing the writing sample advice you might give, even though you may not have had to do that with your own applications? Is there advice that you would give to mid-career students at this point? I'll jump in there and uh, to just say that um, one of the great things that I have experienced at HCS is to really be authentic in my in what I say and talk from my lived experience. My lived experience has proven to be a great grounding place in all of my papers, and I think that 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 really helps to to think about you're going to write about something that is meaningful to you personally. I think that that's just, that's a, just a comment I would I would make. I think we're seeing another question, which is probably for you, Margaret, on professional references versus academic for mid-career students. Actually, um, the, uh, well, I, I, I want to just, um, Okay, so what I generally recommend and what is written in the application instructions is 
has been some time since it, you've been in um, an academic setting that's not a problem at all. As we mentioned, um, we certainly have folks that come in after some time. We just ask that you consider um, asking perhaps professional recommendations to write about skills and abilities as they would relate to your uh, to graduate study. So perhaps you've done some critical analysis or, or um, writing for a, a, for your current work. You know you can have you can ask your recommendation providers to speak about those things. Um, and if you are applying for the Master of Divinity program, please don't forget that we do ask for one letter recommendation that speaks of your ministerial promise. But but again, that is um, very largely defined. We we define ministry with a lowercase m. Um, so you just want to have somebody who can attest to that kind of work. Perhaps um, our panelists, can, do you have any advice for folks that are thinking like, who could I ask for a graduate application in my life right now? How did you sort of figure that out? Um, thanks. I'm going to jump in on this one too because that was very difficult for me after 30 years like I didn't have an academic reference I didn't know what to do and I was going from a corporate advertising business into ministry so I just couldn't think about who could I possibly ask but what I ended up doing was I, I ended up asking my mentor one of my mentors who is somebody with whom I had a tr very good relationship someone who I feel saw me and saw qualities in me that 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 I valued that he valued and it's somebody I really felt who knew me and um I that's the one where I said I, after I asked him I threw up <laughs> because I was so I just was so worried that he was gonna what was he gonna think going to divinity school um but he got it instantly he understood exactly what I was doing and it, it, he was very excited about supporting me in this. So it's really somebody that, that, you, that, that knows who you are and knows, knows who you are and what's important to you in your life. Yeah, I would also say, uh, Sally, similarly, uh, I asked uh, one of my professional uh, mentors as well to write about um, the work that I was doing in education as ministry. And, the, and especially working in vulnerable communities um, and starting a number of initiatives for students. Um, what ministry traits did I bring to that work um, as I was leading change or leading transformation in school districts? And then I coupled that with a uh, traditional reference from a spiritual mentor uh, in, in church as well um, to talk about some of the traits that I bring in terms of combining ministry not only within the confines of the church but on the periphery of the church walls in the community in terms of leading transformation. But one of the things that I would say um, about HDS that has just been magnificent that it has broadened my perspective about ministry. And ministry can mean so many different things. Uh, even in taking classes where I've taken classes with um, that are, you know, what it, when it's writing as ministry. Um, and it's really developed me and given me voice uh, as a writer to speak to some of the moral and ethical um, challenges that are faced in our times. Uh, I've developed the language to articulate and ground some of that discourse um, in the scholarship and in the, the research of great thought leaders and thinkers. And so it's been an, a, a, a truly a magnificent experience for me in terms of really uh, digging deep and excavating all of those skills uh, that are there and nurturing those skills and highlighting those skills and um, fostering the depth that you need to really speak truth to power in a, a number of settings in the public sphere. 
Thanks, Tom. There, there's a question here. I think um, I'd love, love to hear each of our uh, panelists address. And that was really what was it like tra transitioning from full time professional work to being a student again a after that? And a lot was going on there for each of you, I'm sure. Can, can you talk about some of the lessons learned and any advice that you might have connected to that? Lori, you were smiling broadly. Why don't we start with you? Okay. <laughs> I'm smiling because yes, um, it was definitely a transition. And um, as I alluded to before, um, you know, getting back into a classroom again and, and learning how to think and, um, and listen actively and critically um, and how to read also actively and critically. Um, I found a lot of support from my classmates um, who were also coming back into the classroom over time. I remember having a conversation with Sally um, in the first year about navigating the infamous theories and methods course and how did she survive that. And she talked about um, in her particular section, her small group out of theories and methods that they formed a, really a support group and they all took portions of the reading and then would report into one another um, on those readings. So, so little kind of hacks like that, that I learned from my classmates um, was definitely helpful. In addition, what was it, what has been instrumental are the teaching fellows um, that are, I think in all of my classes, I've had uh, teaching fellows who supplement and support um, the faculty instructor, and they have all to the person been incredibly helpful and available um, for support and encouragement. And um, that has been tremendously helpful. Um, and then finally, there are actually um, uh, learning resources um, that you can access um, through the student support services. And I have met on a couple of occasions with a woman who is a, um, a learning coach and she has been fantastic also at giving some tips and tricks and, and also being encouraging um, as well. So, um, so I would say, you know, at the onset, those are kind of the, the tips that come top of mind for me in making that transition, yeah. 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 Tom, I'll yeah. oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Sally, were you going to? You go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that I think for me, one of the most, um, the, the skills that I've used in um, leadership prior to coming to uh, HDS have been critical. Um, to employ in the work that I've been doing at HDS. Um, specifically time management has been a pivotal uh, piece for me because there are copious amounts of uh, reading uh, to do and copious amounts of writing, but I love both. But it's just grounding that in, you know, just managing my time well so that I can attend to the requirements from each one of the, the courses. But I would um, also echo uh, what uh, Lori has said. You know, I've had such incredible experiences um, here with um, students in terms of um, you know, studying uh, with students, doing a deep dive um, into the reading. I've had incredible experiences with TFs and, um, and my professors um, here at Harvard have just made an indelible mark uh, on my life. And I could just really go down the list of people who have uh, really made such an imprint uh, on me that it's, um, it's just been, it's truly been transformative. So I don't, for, so for those that fear that you'll come to Harvard and you will get lost in the fray, it truly, the, that is not true. Um, they, there is a, 
You, you will not stand in anyone's shadow. You will be in their embrace. And they will, uh, I, I just think as a community, you know, people really um, pull themselves, um, you know, around you and blanket you in such a way that you can't fail. Um, and you will not fall through the cracks. And so for those that are interested in taking the leap uh, to come to HDS, it is a place that is going to ensure that you are successful uh, on your journey. Thanks, Tom. Sally, anything? Yeah, just a couple, two couple things. First of all, what Lori, what Lori said, both, what both of them, both of you guys said, let me just, it's no joke, you guys, this is Harvard, it's not easy, right? But, but the fact is that um, what I learned was, because in my business world, it was all about quick memos, summarize, get to the bottom line. Here, it's a lot more about thinking, you know, really thinking and engaging with thought. And, and get, uh, But the, as an older student, I had a much stronger relationship with the professors than I ever thought I would because I'm actually their peers and age-wise. In fact, I'm older than most of them, but you know, so you have that connection. The TFs are amazing. I engaged a writing tutor, but I also had to work really hard to get comfortable with the language of academia, which is different from the language of business. So I actually still have this glossary that I started every to hegemonic, what does that mean? Plurals and what does that mean? You know, epistory, whatever, all these other religious terms. And it was like I said, after I freaked out, I realized, you know, it's like learning a new language. So, you, you know, you, 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 after you get that first kind of, oh my gosh, I can't do this, you realize that you can, you really can do it. And that's really amazing. I also engaged a writing tutor because I had a really hard time with writing the papers. So there are resources, as Tom was mentioning that you can engage. And since we're grownups, we will engage these resources. When we were undergrads, we don't engage the resources. So you're not alone. We have an interesting question here about what's it like being in class with a bunch of 20 year olds? And have you indeed gravitated toward your own age groups or has there been a new intergenerational um, learning? And, and what would you have to say about that? Sally, you're smiling broadly. I am, it's been such a thrill. I'm telling you, these kids, they're all so smart. Everybody's so smart. You're all working together on trying to engage the material and the thinking. And what's so, I'm, I've been so impressed with the intellectual, intellectual abilities of my classmates that I forget that they're that much younger. I remember running into one of my friends from class and she's like, oh, Sally, I'm like, oh, Tara. And then her boyfriend called me ma'am, which was like, oh no, I really am not that same age, but you get that feeling like you are the same, you are your 20 something. The other thing is from a context perspective, they're all reading Harry Potter. And I'm like that, my daughter reads Harry Potter. So it's different. And that's why we formed that third chapter group. The three of us actually formed that group, which is uh, for older students so that we could have a chance to talk about some of those things that are specific to older students. Yeah, I, I would concur with that. Um, I've had a, a ball uh, with, um, you know, just in, in the community uh, as a whole with students that, you know, run the gamut of, you know, whether they're 20 or where they're 30. Um, I just love the ideas that they bring to the table. I love um, hearing about life from their perspective. Um, I love uh, engaging with them in terms of some of the things that they are grappling with uh, right now and being able to weigh in and, and them wanting me to weigh in on a number of the, um, you know, challenges or conceptions that they have, you know, about different things. It's, it's been a, it, it's really been amazing, uh, for me. And I think that there is, um, this fallacy of, 
equivocation that uh, we only need to, as you know, older students, just be in a, 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 a room with older students and young people really don't, you know, need to be in a room with, with um, you know, just among themselves sharing ideas. But I just think that there has been a synthesis of what we bring to the table and what some of our younger colleagues bring to the table. And it creates something new. It creates a new discourse, um, I think, for all of us, and one that has been very enriching from my, from my perspective. Um, thank you. I am so happy to see Salma on our call. She is our MTS representative today, and we're glad that you were here. We've had a good conversation about uh, mid-career students returning to HDS. We didn't have a chance for you to speak earlier, but I would love any reflections that you would like to add in these last few minutes that we have some. The MTS experience is an important one um, with a large number of students at HDS. And you are, as a second year student, um, can you help us see, see that a little more closely? Uh, well, first of all, I really apologize for my tardiness. Um, thank you for giving me a chance to take part despite that. Um, so I, I've had a marvelous experience um, as an MTS student at HDS. Even with the social distancing, um, you know, academics aside, uh, there really is a community of support. And I think that's important for folks to know because uh, so many people are, I think, maybe hesitant about starting a graduate program under these, you know, under the Zoom conditions. Uh, so I would encourage everyone, don't let that be a deterrent. Um, we still make friendships. Um, our work is going forward with some adjustments. And I also really appreciate, uh, you know, my, my personal trajectory, my academic interests are in historic women warriors. And it's not something I'm going to find a class that I can take, but I feel that I am very supported to pursue my research interests, even if they might not fit into the program that you see when you, you know, look at the classes, look at the requirements. So, Again, um, you know, that is something that I hope will not cause people to hesitate to apply and to join our community. Whatever it is that you want to pursue, I, I believe that you will find the support. I have really found the support for something that many of my professors might not even be um, very familiar with, that I'm still supported to pursue my research and um, encouraged continually to really, really apply my passions in this degree program. That's wonderful. Um, Sam, we, we've been taking questions and answers from our audience today, which has, has been, have been very interesting. Um, one of them that's come in recently is, is whether our, our uh, students have time for other commitments, work, family, how do you balance your time in a program like this? Maybe you'd like to take that one first and we'll see if we have any other observations around it. Um, well, it is, uh, there is a lot to juggle as mid-career folks. Many of us have children. Mom, my mother is currently living with me. Um, I have a, a part-time work that I do. And it can be a challenge, but I actually find it very enriching um, and fostering community with other folks. And I think sometimes we don't realize uh, that we're not as different from some of the younger students who are what we would expect at sort of a traditional age of entering graduate program. Um, I, I have a number of friends across all age ranges, especially again with the pandemic, who are juggling multiple concerns um, I have found my professors and my advisor extremely supportive. If I am really, you know, if I need extra time because of personal commitments, if I need extra time just because I'm starting to feel exhausted, my professors are extremely supportive. I just send them an email and say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling this week. And without fail, people will give, give space for that. Um, and I also think that the, you know, perspectives that we bring 
uh, one of the things I love about HDS is the way that we are encouraged to bring our personal experiences and our personal viewpoints into our academic work. We can speak from a place of what we have been through, what we are going through. And I think that it really enriches the academic experience. So I, I don't have children myself, um, but I imagine that that is also something people need to juggle. But I do feel that this has been an environment where we are not going to be penalized in any way for having other concerns. I think everyone's very understanding and kind. And again, appreciate that. Um, I have horses and I'm very privileged to, to have that, but it's a lot of work. But I can bring that experience of this relationship with non-human beings and it, it enriches my work. Um, my professional life outside of HDS enriches my academic work and my academic work enriches my career. So it is something that takes a little adjustment to get used to but I don't think that it hampers me in, in really any significant kind of a way. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Simon. You, you mentioned that you work part-time. Someone else had asked if our students ha have the ability to work um, as they're attending school. Um, Lori, I know you certainly do. Tom and Sally, have, have you attempted part-time work while you're doing your full-time degrees? Yes, I, I consult uh, while I am doing my uh, academic work as well. And um, it has, and, and just like I said earlier, it's all about time management. But I would say uh, yes to everything that everyone has said so far because, um, HDS is such a nurturing place that you will not fail. And I and also I just think that all of the uh, tools that are in place, um, you have to um, you have to succeed. You're compelled um, to succeed because they undergird you um, in such a way that you um, that you you just you just can't fail. And so I have, I, I think that in, in closing, I will just say that um, to every professor um, that I've had thus far at HDS, um, they've given me something that is so um, amazing that it has left um, an imprint on my spirit. Uh, that I will forever be changed. And so it's always a pleasure for me to talk about my HDS experience um, because for a school and for an, for an environment that has given so much to me, I feel indebted to give back to it and to share with others that it is a place that will that will that can contribute really to just soul resuscitating joy um and uh it, it's it's been an a, amazing experience for me it truly has that's a wonderful close we actually have come up on our time so i'm not going to be able to give another last word but if we had to have one tom that was super thank you um, Margaret, would you, we've had so many great questions and we haven't been able to address them all. It's been lively and, and interesting. Um, would you like to give any, any uh, close from admissions on all of this? Yes, thanks so much, Susan, and thanks so much to our panelists. Um, uh, honestly, you help make my job so wonderful. You, you speak for me, so thank you so much. Uh, for all of us. Um, and to the audience, thank you so much for your time today. Um, as Sarah, as my colleague Sarah chatted in the bo uh, chat box, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions. We know we can't get to all of those wonderful questions, but if you would like to uh, be answered by a current student, um, please uh, write to ask underscore students at hds.harvard.edu. Or alternatively, alternatively, if you have a question about any component of the application for admission, please feel free to reach out to the admissions office um, 
And, but yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you to our panelists. I, I really appreciate it. It's been a great hour. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one.